Um, Aurora police say surveillance footage shows 33 year old Solomon Galligan walking onto Black Forest Hills Elementary School grounds and approaching a group of students playing in a field before allegedly lunging for one of the kids. Galligan has since been charged with one count of attempting kidnapping and is being held in the Arapahoe County Jail on a $25,000 bond. Court records show back in 2012, Galligan was convicted in Jefferson County for failing to register as a sex offender today in court. The court did decide to maintain that 25,000 court bond. And again, Galligan is scheduled to appear in court a week from today. That's Thursday at nine in the morning. Come here. Come here. Where are you going? Pretty girl. Chill out here with me. And let me do this video. We're going to do this video. Good girl. That's my baby. What's up with the YouTube? We got one coming for you tonight. He's being referred to as the face they can never unsee again. This man is known as the Aurora Fitnall Demon, a.k.a. Solomon Galligan. And the man is now going viral. And shout out to all my people that follow me on TikTok. 3.3 million views, which is my highest TikTok video yet about this character right here. So Solomon Galligan is going viral, not for anything good, but for the fact that now people are coming to realize that yes, zombies are real. And it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing crisis in America. It's the fentanyl. If you look at this man's eyes, you can see that his soul is no longer there. The drugs that he's taking have made the soul in the body leave and he's just a shell of a person. And now the story we're gonna get into comes out of Aurora, Colorado. And it's not the bad, bad part of Aurora neither. I mean, if anybody's familiar with Colorado and you're familiar with Aurora, you know, Aurora's got a hood. It is known for being hood, but this is actually in the Black Forest area of Aurora where this case comes out of. And this is a good area, Cherry Creek School District. And so this happened in broad daylight, middle of the day while the kids were at recess. Solomon Galligan, who is a known sex offender, from what my understanding is, was living in a park nearby the school. And this is what the issue is that he had failed to register his location where he was living out of. So he had an outstanding warrant for, for his arrest from a previous sex case that he got in Pueblo. Um, and it said something about a prostitute. I can't remember all the exact charges, but some kind of crazy sexual deviancy, deviancy was going on for sure. So he has a previous sex case her to this day. The man who attacked her has a lengthy criminal history, including several charges for felony assault, as well as a conviction for misdemeanor sex assault. Yet every time he faces a judge, he's either quickly released or deemed incompetent to stand trial. And the woman I met today says it is far past time for the system to change. Keep throwing him out there until when? Until he kills somebody? Yvette Edmonds has every reason to be angry, even afraid. This is an ongoing thing with this man. The man who once attacked her is now the face so many can't unsee. I mean, my God, it's everywhere now. People calling him zombie. But mixed with her anger is a surprising heart full of empathy. I don't want to call him a monster because I don't think he is. I forgave him a long time ago, Solomon. I just think that the system has failed him. Yvette first saw Solomon Galligan in 2021, walking near the Denver County Courthouse. Out of nowhere, she says, he knocked her to the ground. But it was one punch. One punch, seven stitches, and three years of court battles, only for the judge to dismiss the felony assault case, Yvette says, due to a lack of resources. That's what she said. We don't have the resources in the jail cells to give him his medicine. It's why I didn't understand why they let him go, knowing that every time they let him go, he does something. Every time. This time, he allegedly tried kidnapping a child. And I'm a teacher, so to see this poor child, they'll have trauma the way I do. It makes me mad. And when Yvette saw this jarring mugshot, her heart couldn't help but break. I've seen him. I've seen this Solomon medicated, and he's beautiful. I get it, and he's mentally ill. I understand. So why are we not then helping him? As a special education teacher, Yvette says she knows people like Solomon need greater support, patience, and care. 
all things he's likely never had and she fears never will. And maybe that's why I stay in special education because I don't want these kids to end up like Solomon. During a recess, Solomon Galligan, looking as crazy as he does, walked right up into the school uh, recess playground and attempted to abduct a kid. And the teacher's assistants never even seen this happen. From my understanding, they were all on their phones, however many there was out there, I'm not sure. But ultimately they were on their phones and we can assume more than likely they were on TikTok, more than likely they were on Snapchat, more than likely they were on Instagram. What saved the boy from being abducted is the other kids that were at recess that were playing and they yelled, stranger danger, stranger danger. And ultimately Solomon was, was alarmed and he you know, left the kid alone and left up out of the school and later on was caught down the street at a Walmart. And upon being arrested, comes to find out he's a previous sex offender who has failed to register as a sex offender. And a lot of people are like, why, how did that happen? Well, anytime a sex offender moves, even if they move and they're, they're living in a park, they have to register their location. They have to put that park there. So they have to keep re-registering every time they move. So that's why he, he was he had the warrant out for him. But it even gets crazier because this, this Solomon Galligan is not referred to as a man. He's referred to as a trans woman. So you'll hear the pronoun now, she and, and her. Evaluation for Galligan. Her preliminary court date is scheduled for a week from today. Ultimately, this is a man. And I, there's, a, there's a segment right here that I'm gonna get into with his family, with his, which is his sister, which seeing the video, I assume he's adopted. It doesn't say in the video that he's adopted, but seeing that ultimately this is a white woman saying that she's uh, his sister, his older sister at that, leads me to believe he was adopted. And you know, who knows, you know, a lot of times when kids are adopted like that, you don't know if the parents were doing some kind of drugs that he already has something in his system when he came out as a baby or what. But, Clearly looking at his mugshot, we can tell he that's not crack. I know crackheads. I, I was born in the 80s. I was, I was raised around crackheads. This is a new age crackhead. This is a fit and all demon right here. And you can just see that the soul is out of the body. But let's check out that clip real quick. It's not the first time that Solomon Galligan has been arrested. 90s reporter Rhea Jha joins us now. His family says, Rhea, that he's been in and out of jail now for 12 years. Right, and somehow he manages to get back out on the street each time. I spoke with Galligan's older sister and niece who are frustrated with the system. Trouble for Solomon Galligan started when he was 16. His family says he was diagnosed with schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. He was known for acting out, making impulse decisions, running away, running away from the home, running away from school. When he turned 18, he ran away for good. Now, Sarah, Amanda, and the rest of his family constantly wonder where he is, except when he's in custody. Every six months that we find him in the jail system, and we're, we're happy he's there because then he's not out on the streets. Galligan is a repeat offender, including assault, burglary, sex crimes, and now he's charged with kidnapping for trying to grab a child at recess. I found out through my dad. He texted me Monday morning. Sarah got a familiar text, but she says she couldn't believe her brother had taken it this far. It just really sucks that he had to do something so eye-catching for everybody to see. He's not well and he's not okay to be out and be on his own. When Galligan has been arrested in the past, Sarah says a judge then deems him incompetent to stand trial, meaning he needs to be treated or institutionalized. Once he goes to the courts and they say they don't have room for him. and Then he ends up back on the street. They just let him go, go back on the street, and it's just the same thing over and over again. His family says it's a familiar cycle created by the system. Our society and our you know, government and stuff have failed him and have failed the community that was affected just this last week. With Galligan back in court again on Thursday, his family wonders if this time will finally be the last. It's just a process that she wants to be done. And I don't want to result in him hurting someone so badly that there's like no way to come back for that or him getting himself hurt. So he can't come back from that either. Now think about this. If this guy didn't look as scary as he did with the teachers being on his, on their phones, this guy would have just walked up in there and got him a kid. 
You know what I mean? If they, if he if he didn't look like that, these other kids probably wouldn't even notice. They know it's just a another day of recess and bam. But thank God for those kids being able to be smart enough to yell stranger danger. And can you imagine the trauma that the kid has from this? Like, you know, just think about how frightening that's got to be for him. And I, I've seen his dad, you know, now the family and other parents of the school are petitioning for an independent third party investigation into how this happened. And, you know, it's very frightening. You know, this could have been very bad. You think about this guy, he's on some drugs. and he's, What else? What do you think he's going to do to that little boy? Had he got that little boy, what do you think he would have did? I mean, we can only imagine, right? So the families of the school, the family that of the boy who was abducted, as well as the parents of the school, they want answers. They want the, the they want the teachers right now, the teachers' aides that were there. They want them. They want them on administrative leave immediately, and they want the third party to come in here and do an investigation to see how did this go wrong, minute by minute play. How how did this go wrong? How did this even happen? And even the principal has admitted that there was wrongdoing because the school never went in lockdown. The parents all weren't notified. You know, they just let out and, you know, it, sh it should have been a big issue right there. I mean, damn, this, this this walking zombie just about got a child right off the playground during midday. Like, that's insane in a good area. Erica, a group of parents pinned this 10-page letter to Cherry Creek School District leaders. And while some parents say they feel somewhat reassured by the school's response, they say more still needs to be done here. What happened here nearly a week ago at Black Forest Hills Elementary has students feeling on edge. As I understand, uh, just like our kid, they're all having trouble sleeping, right, and still have a lot of anxiety and, and fear. Aurora police arrested 33-year-old Solomon Galligan, a registered sex offender, hours after he allegedly went to the school and approached kids at recess. Police say he even tried grabbing one of the students. We got lucky in that, that nothing really serious happened, right, but these kids are going to feel the effects for a very long time. Parents sent this letter and petition to district leaders detailing what they say are failures by the school on multiple levels, as well as outlining the sequence of events and sharing what they believe should happen. We're passionate and persistent. Dante White, whose child encountered the suspect, Include it. You know, obviously get everyone put on administrative leave, do the independent investigation is really critical, right? And have a third party go through and, and really verify the facts. The principal responded admitting to mishandling the situation following the suspect's arrest last week. She said one clear misstep was that the school should have gone into a secure status, meaning all students were to come inside while security investigated. She also announced changes the school will be taking. They include adding an acting assistant principal more security coordinators and mental health resources, retraining staff on security protocols, as well as reinstating their watchdog group so parents and guardians can play a role in keeping the school safe. This is our lifeblood. This is our joy. So, you know, until we get full resolve, it's, it's far from over. If it was, believe me, if this was in the, the hood of Aurora, it probably wouldn't even get that much coverage. But then again, the guy looks so fucking crazy. It probably would, right? But... You know, it's crazy to see this taking place because, you know, the fentanyl problem is, is a is a big problem for young and old. And, and it's, it's all over Colorado, Denver, to be exact, Aurora as well, because fentanyl is a new crack. So you think about what fentanyl does and how it just it turns somebody into a real life zombie. I mean, they'll be they'll be sitting there. I'm sure y'all didn't seen them. There's no way y'all haven't seen them unless y'all don't live in a city. But I mean, these are real zombies. They'll be they'll be asleep standing up right at, right right on the at the bus stop right at the corner of the street and it's sad it's sad to see the world being failed like that and that's ultimately what Solomon Galligan's family says that you know the 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 system has failed him the system has failed him the system should have done a better job with him and his mental health but what do y'all think do y'all think that the system is to blame for this you know when somebody does stuff like this to children me personally, I don't think I don't think that there's ever a way to rehab them. There's not a way to there's not a way to give them any any skills or tools that will keep them away from their weird ass ways and urges, other than either being locked up or put on an island or you know, poof, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, crazy world we live in. And me personally, I don't have kids, so you know, 
I can only imagine what somebody would think having kids and sending their kids to school. Me personally, I already wanted homeschool my kids so I could teach them what I want them to know and understand the real truth, you know, not the truth that they teach at school. But, you know, what what would y'all think, though? I mean, damn, if this happened at your school, what would you think? I mean, this is a parent's worst nightmare right here, right? But y'all let me know down in them comments what y'all think about this right here. You know, it is disturbing. I mean, the guy's face, good Lord, I ain't never, I don't even know what that white stuff is on his face like mind-boggling but 2024 expect the unexpected to the next one y'all i'm gone